So my build for today is going to be a walking robot which is going to run off one servo. I saw this build on YouTube ages ago and I really wanted to make one myself. The build on YouTube was a cool looking robot. Um, it was pretty large but my, my goal today is to make one that fits in my hand. Let's go. So this gives you an idea of how big it's going to be. Probably have the battery around there. And I'll cut this off around here. So that will be the size of the body. I've got to make two ends on this um, U piece of uh, aluminium, so I'll have to pack that in. So that's one end done. Now I'll work out exactly how and where we're gonna place these parts. I think I'll place the servo there, battery around there. Need a little room for the switch. We'll switch at the back. I guess it's like a tail. So pretty much I'm gonna need it's about these up even closer. I want to make this as small as I possibly can. So that's probably about the size I'm going to get it. So the first one I did, I cut a little bit too much into the top plate there and when I went to bend it, it went snapped off. So I redid it. This time I left the ends a little bit longer. I just look, I think it looks a bit more animalistic when you look at it from the front. A little face maybe. Um, you can see they slightly curve in which won't be a problem. And yeah, so next I've got to work out motor, battery, drill a couple of holes here and here, one for a switch and one for the front legs. So we'll do that next. So I've cut that little section out for the servo, I fold it back and just make sure that it fits. Fits like a glove, jeez, very rarely do I get something to fit like that, so awesome. We'll have to modify this servo a bit later as well, these wires are just way too thick and I need to do some modifications inside the servo so it spins without uh, stopping, so we'll do that, but I think next we'll add the battery. Okay, so I made the cut for the battery. I just cut it out with the Dremel and then uh, filed it down. So the battery fits pretty snugly in there now. Like that. So I kind of want it to look like a bit of a belly on the robot, which I kind of think it does. So that's what it's looking like so far. Still got a bit of work to do. Obviously, it's got no legs. But next, I think we'll start drilling the holes for the bottom, le uh, the back legs, the front legs, and we'll drill a hole for the switch. So this was the second chassis that I built, and last night I was laying in bed and I was thinking, it doesn't feel like I've done this right, and I realised I forgot very important part to it. There's supposed to be a bolt coming out the side here but it needs to be in line with this one and as you can see I've got a big cut out there so I realized I wouldn't be able to use this chassis. So Mark 
three. Uh, this is a sh one I, a, sh a chassis I built up today. Um, I did it off camera because you don't want to see me do it all over again. But now you can see that these two bolts are lined up. So there's a pivot point here. Um, I've actually wired everything up as well, so you can see that I've got the uh, charger. And look at the wiring. So the wiring's really nice and tucked away in there. Um, and then I put the switch on top. So everything works. Um, it's very nice and clean. I'm really happy so far with it. The next part's the kind of tricky part. I've got to build the uh, ability for it to, to move its legs. So I've got to wire that up now. Um, I'll try and show you how I do that on camera. But if I can't, I'll just get it done and, and then show you how it works. Um, but yeah, it's pretty pretty good size. By the time the legs are, are built on it, it won't be able to fit in my hands. Um, but you know, I don't think I could make it any smaller. I've got a basic outline of back legs now, and I'm using the inside, the metal inside of a banana plug as the pivot. So what I need to do is solder that uh, onto there, like that, and then I obviously should have to need to shape the legs a little bit more. I'll probably cut them probably a little bit too long as well. So I'm going to solder that onto this little pivot on that angle. And we'll see how we go with that. That's the inside banana plug. So I'm going to cut this arm off here. And that fits perfectly over my screw. And I will solder on the arm or the legs to, to this. So you can see this is the one with the end cut off it. And then that fits really, really nicely on there. There's not much slop at all. And now we'll add the legs. Well, that actually worked better than I hoped for. So the next one I'll film. But um, these are the back legs. The solder took really well. And the banana clip fits really nice. There's hardly any wiggle. Um, you know, I'll need to play around the, how the legs sit, but... This moves awesomely, very easy, swings on and on that pivot really well. And so we'll make those uh, front legs now. So here are my front legs. So they kind of look like insect legs. They will sit like that, and those will move like that. I'm gonna to have to put some little grips in the end of them. I don't know what yet, but something just to help it pull itself along. I decided to do the linkages, which is this vertical one, and this horizontal one here off camera because it was a pain in the absolute butt. Um, it's just because I wasn't sure <laughs> what I was doing. But I worked it out in the end. So um, this horizontal, what I worked out was that if you push the servo down, so it's facing down, the front legs should be relatively straight and one of the legs at the back should be lifted up. If you turn the servo up, Again, the legs at the front, at the back, should be relatively straight, and one of the legs should be lifted up. The amount they're lifted up should be relatively the same as well. I couldn't get it exact, but they're pretty close. And then if you turn the servo to the right, you can see these legs are twisted, and these are, well, they should be pretty much straight, but you can see there's a little bit of lift there. And again, turn it to the left, you can see that these legs are turned and these are sitting flat. So with that in mind, you can turn him on and you can see his gait. The linkages are all working well. He's got some good movement. And he's walking pretty straight now. Yeah, so that's it. That's my 
one servo robot builds. A lot of fun to make. Um, you know, not too hard. I've put a, I've made a step-by-step -step instructable as well. So I'll put a link to that in this YouTube, uh, in this YouTube clip in the description. Um, goes through more detail about how how to build one yourself. But it's a lot of fun. If you've never built anything like this before, um, this is a good place to start. Uh, as I said, it's, it's simple. It's only a battery and a servo, and you know, a couple of bits and pieces that you can find probably in the house. Um, maybe not the chassis, but the rest of it you probably got in the garage or the house somewhere. So thanks for watching and keep on making.